Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing a few projects showcasing the new Easter Bunny stamp set by Simon Hurley that's now available in the Spellbinder shop. This is a large stamp set that has eight different bunny images, plus two chicks, a butterfly, and two eggs, as well as 10 different sentiment stamps. What I love best about this is that it comes with coordinating dies for all of the stamps, including the sentiments. This is the perfect stamp set for making Easter or spring cards, and that's what I'll be sharing with you today. I'm using my Misty stamping platform and a half sheet of Express It blending cardstock to stamp my images onto. This cardstock is great for Copic coloring, which is what I plan to use to color my images. I've placed all of these image stamps on my platform, trying to spread them out far enough from each other so that I can use the dies on top and they won't be in the way of each other. I'm using Versafine Claire Nocturne ink to stamp my images. This is a pigment ink that always works great for me. I normally don't have to stamp twice with it, but because these stamps are brand new and haven't been conditioned yet, I added another coat to just a few stamps at the top. This ink stays wet longer than water-based ink like Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is my usual go-to ink for Copic coloring, but I wanted to emboss my images. So while the ink was still wet, I added some clear embossing powder on top and I just grabbed the nearest sheet of paper that I could find to cover my work surface, which happened to be one of the pages from my latest quarterly card making challenge, number 13. I like using paper so that I can funnel the extra powder back into my container. After letting my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds, I applied it to melt the embossing powder, trying to alternate front and back to prevent warping. One thing I love about stamping in black ink and using clear embossing powder is that it helps me to stay within the lines when I'm coloring. I also stamped several additional sheets of bunnies off camera while I had the stamps in my platform. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like bulk card making. So I usually stamp a bunch of images because I figure if you've got all the stuff out, I might as well make the most of it and stamp a lot. So after stamping the bunny images, I laid out all of the sentiment stamps across the top of a half sheet of cardstock and I stamped these as well. And then I flipped it over so I could get two sets on the same sheet. And I continued stamping multiple sheets of sentiments. So now I have plenty of images and sentiments so next I took my coordinating dies and I taped them all down using some low tack mint tape. And then I ran it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. I popped out all of the die cuts trying to keep the dies in place. So I could just line up the next sheet behind what I call a template. This is one of my favorite hacks for die cutting a bunch of stamps quickly. I did stamp a few of the images a little too close so I wasn't able to add the dies to all of the images. So one of the eggs and the cute little bunny coming out of the egg didn't get cut out. So I just cut those out afterward. Next, I selected a few sheets of pattern paper from one of the Spellbinders quick and easy card kits. This one's called Happy Skies Ahead. So I chose this fun pink plaid pattern and then also a spring green gingham check and then some thin stripes and spring colors. I selected a top folding light blue heavyweight cardstock for one of my card bases. And then I used 65 pound pink cardstock for the layers. I decided to use sketch number seven from my latest quarterly card making challenge number 13 for the inspiration for this card. This is actually a sketch by Alicia with Call Me Crafty Owl, who is the creator of Sheet Load of Cards. We are collaborating this month and I'm using a few of her past sheet load sketches in my printable this quarter and she is using one of my sketches from challenge 12 for her January of 2024 sheet load. Instead of following the cutting guides for six sheets of paper, I'm just going to cut these papers using the measurements just for sketch seven and I'll show you how I use the remaining scraps in just a bit. Cut a half inch strip for that piece across the middle and I slanted one of the ends according to the sketch. Next I went through my images to see which one I wanted to use to sit on top of that strip. And I ended up going with the first one that I put on there. It looks like this little bunny's laying in the grass, which is perfect for laying on that strip. So I glued all of my pieces down and I'm using my new favorite tool in my craft room. This is the Precision Glue Press by My Sweet Petunia and it has Nouveau liquid adhesive in it and I love Nouveau. It's great if you have carpal tunnel like me 
And since I've been using it, I use less glue since it has a fine tip. I love that it keeps the glue ready to come out every time you use it. I like that you can add your own glue. It comes with an empty bottle, so if you have a favorite glue, you can use that instead of the Nouveau. But I like the Nouveau because it dries pretty quick, and you can scoot things where you want it, and it dries clear. So, um, I, next I took some yellow and white twine and coiled it up in a circle, and I'll be gluing it behind that strip as shown on the sketch. Next, I cut out the sentiment, the bunny hugs and Easter wishes, using the banner die that's part of the die set. And I'll be placing this on top of that pink strip. So now I'll zoom in a bit and I will color my bunny. I'm using Copic markers to color in my images. I used a very light cool gray for the bunny starting with C3 all along the edges. And then I added C1 to color in the rest of the ears. But I really wanted my bunny to look white so I went a little bit lighter with C0 to color in the rest. And then for the ears and for the nose, I used R83. And then when I went in with a lighter R81 for the rest of the nose. And then I went back in with C3 to darken some of the places where there should be shadows. I used the same R83 and R81 for the butterfly. And then for the grass, I used G21. And for the Easter egg, I used B000. I really wanted a light shade of blue to match my card base. And then I assembled the rest of the card. I added the banner on the pink strip and I tried to keep the ends of the twine hidden behind that pink strip. I popped up the banner with some foam tape. And then I added the butterfly and applied some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew to the bunny's nose. Now it dries clear so it'll just be shiny when it dries. And then I added some iridescent stickles glitter glue to the Easter egg and the butterfly. And this finishes off my first card. I used some of the pattern paper scraps for my next card. I cut a four by five and a quarter inch panel of the pink plaid and I placed it on another light blue card base. And I cut an oval out of some of that pink card stock to go in the center. I took scraps from the striped paper and cut a smaller oval and then colored in my bunny and cut out the sentiment, I hope your day is extraordinary with the banner die and then I glued it down and added some pink gems all the way around the oval to finish off the card. And then for my last card, I used the rest of the green gingham pattern paper for a three and three quarter by five inch panel. I used light yellow glitter paper to cut a four by five and a quarter inch layer. And out of that, I cut an oval out of the center for the front of the card. I cut a smaller oval out of the pink plaid scraps and placed the two chick images on top with the sentiment that says chirp chirp. I popped up all three with foam tape and that finishes off card number three. So here's all three cards again using the new Simon Hurley Easter Bunny stamp set available now at Spellbinders. I think they turned out super cute. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you're interested in the stamp set or any of the other products I use to make these cards, I'll have all of the links down in the description box if you'd like to make a purchase. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment to let me know you stopped by. Also, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.